This video is sponsored by the Ultimate Freelancing Bundle by StudyWebDevelopment.com, which gives you everything you need to start your own freelancing business, including a 130-page in-depth guide, invoicing and client proposal templates, website templates, an SEO checklist, and much more. Visit the link in the description and use the code BRAD25 to get 25% off. Hey guys, in this video I want to talk a little bit about quoting clients for web development services. And this pertains to anyone that's freelancing on Upwork to running a de development or design firm or consulting for larger businesses, whatever it may be, anytime you need to quote a client. And I can't tell you what to quote or how much to charge. There's just too many factors for that. That's not what this video is about. I just want to give you some tips and, and some things to think about when quoting potential clients. And please keep in mind that this stuff is from my experience, it's from my own opinion, and from some research. So you, you can disagree with anything that I say, that's fine. So first, I guess, tip that I have is know what you're quoting. Web development is a very broad spectrum, and I'm sure a lot of you have been asked how much to build a website or how much to build a mobile app with no, no other information given whatsoever. And that question is just impossible to answer. In fact, your answer to that question should be about 10 more questions about the project and, and, and seeing what it involves. How many pages, what types of functionality, um, do they have a design, things like that. Many people think when when they're they're paying for a website or a web app that everything is included from hosting to building to creating logos and branding SEO so you have to be very specific about what the clients needs are uh, before you give any hint of a quote because if you make assumptions and you say I don't know a thousand dollars thinking it's going to be some small little website and then later on they say oh I wanted a social network and you know you're gonna run into some issues so just be sure you know exactly what you're quoting so the next one uh, isn't really a tip it's more of just a talking point so I think experience is a huge factor when quoting uh, it really depends on where you are as a developer if you're just starting out and you have maybe some side projects and maybe a few course projects but no real work experience you're going to want to jump at any real work that you can get so that you can put that in your portfolio and you can just gain that that experience. Um, if you can find something local, that's great. Some kind of local business that needs an app or needs a website. Um, if you if you can't find something like that, you might go to some, uh, a website like Upwork.com. Some people look down on these sites, but I, I think that they're a good opportunity to get your foot in the door so you can get some real work experience. Uh, back when I freelanced, I started on Upwork, which was uh, it was actually called odesk.com back then. And like everyone else, I worked for Peanuts at first. However, the more experience I got and the more good reviews, the more I could charge. When people look for a freelancer, they usually have one of two mindsets, especially on freelance websites. One is, how do I get this done in the cheapest way possible, pay the least amount of money, which honestly is not the right mindset for any project because in most cases they're going to get what they pay for. Um, the second type are smarter clients who want people that can actually do the job and get the job done right, even if they have to pay a little more. So those people, they look at feedback, they look at past projects because they're paying more money. So if you can get those two things, if you can get feedback and, and projects, uh, you know, build up your portfolio, then you can start to bring up your rate. Uh, I know for me, if I'm if I was to hire someone, the the cost would be like the third thing I look at. I want to first know that they're capable and they're not going to waste my time and waste their time. So bottom line, yes, you will work for for a little less at the beginning, but it'll pay off later, at least from my my experience, from what I can tell you. So the next one is don't sell yourself short, but make sure you're worth it. And some of you might be thinking, well, you just pretty much said to sell yourself short, but that's only in the very beginning just to get some work under your belt. Uh, I kind of think of that as like the internship part of, of your career. And once you have value as a developer, you don't want to undercharge. Now, just having some projects under your belt doesn't make you truly valuable. If you just half ass those projects and you just scraped by, you're not really worth that much. You, you want to be someone whose clients are extremely happy with 
and proud to recommend to their friends and colleagues. Someone that takes your job and every project you do very seriously, no matter how big or small the project is. Um, you should always be giving 100% effort, be in constant contact with your clients. This is stuff that makes you really valuable. And if you're doing all that stuff, then you're worth the extra cost. So you don't have to be scared or timid when you're giving a quote. Give, give the quote that you feel you're worth. Um, there's people out there that will pay tens of thousands of dollars for websites and web applications if they think that you can give them exactly what they want. Um, you know, if you can get a consulting gig for a large company, something that's ongoing, you can make a, a ton of money for a small amount of work, just writing little plugins and fixing errors and things like that. So put the effort in and, and make yourself worth hiring and you can get some really good gigs. So the next is be organized and consistent. Basically, when you start, whether it's freelancing or starting a business, it takes a lot of time and thought to get organized and kind of get a system going for quotes and proposals and many other things. Uh, with that said, you want to make sure that you have documents for every client and potential client when giving them a quote or proposal. Don't just ramble off a number. Um, format a document that is going to include everything that you're expected to do and I mean everything you want to cover all your bases this way you can um, you know if they try to say that you didn't do this or that you can look back to the document you can look back to the scope and see what is what's on there and what's not um, everything should be very clear you can create these documents yourself you can use a template in fact the sponsor for this video the freelancer bundle actually includes some of this stuff so you might want to check that out but either way you want to be consistent in how you quote your projects uh, also make any documents you have look professional put your your logo your business address all that stuff put that on the documents that you send to your clients so that you you look more professional all right, so this ne next slide I almost called never charge hourly, but I think that's a little too harsh of a statement because there might be cases where you would want to charge hourly. However, overall, I think it's much better for everyone if you carefully go over all the requirements of a project and you come up with a solid quote. At least in my experience, the client is also more comfortable with this because they know exactly what they'll be paying and some asshole can't just say they worked 80 hours when they actually worked 10. Uh, I also believe that your knowledge is worth more than an hourly rate. So if you can do something in one or two hours that would take a less capable developer 10 hours, why on earth would you get paid less or should you get paid less? Your knowledge, your effort, your abilities, they're worth more than an hourly rate. So you don't want to sell yourself short. I do think there can be some areas where... Uh, hourly works such as maintenance things that are kind of mindless and just upkeep I think that hourly rates can work in that situation but overall um, at least I try to stay away from from hourly rates and always went with custom quotes all right so if you're freelancing or you're running a, a web development business or, or a design business or something like that you might find yourself doing some other things in addition to building sites and applications and for the most part that's a good thing but you don't want to bite off more than you can chew so when I ran my business years ago I was offering hosting services basically I was reselling hosting and domains uh, I offered SEO I offered design and even some business consulting and this can be good and bad. It can be good because you can find yourself more ways to make money. You can grow your business more. However, you want to make sure that you know what you're doing. I think that of, of the, the, the services that I just mentioned, SEO is the one thing I would never do again because you can't really control the outcome with the way that algorithms work and they're always changing. Um, it's just a really hard business to get into and I definitely wouldn't recommend it. I had some unhappy customers in the SEO department because they weren't really seeing the results they expected um, and they just didn't really understand how it worked. Frankly, I don't think I, I even understood how it worked. Other than that, things were pretty well. I, I, you know, I did reseller hosting so I could offer to handle every aspect of the project including domain setup, emails, hosting, all that stuff. Um, I have a pretty good eye for design, so I was able to build layouts and themes and so on. So figure out what you can offer. Um, just don't get it in over your head because it's really easy when you're coming up with your business plan to just throw a service 
on there on your website or whatever but once you actually get a client for that service it makes it real and if you don't know what you're doing it can be a nightmare so just make sure you you, you can actually provide the service um, also weigh the pros and cons sometimes it's not worth it to add an extra service so you know figure out if you actually have the time to offer that service if it's going to be worth it for you and in services I'm talking about things like hosting copywriting business services um, SEO social media internet marketing design and branding these are some things that kind of go hand in hand with web development all right guys so that's it I just kind of wanted to get the gears turning a little bit when it comes to giving quotes especially for those of you that are just getting started with this stuff if you like this video please leave a like and you can follow me on Twitter Instagram and Facebook at traversymedia.com and that's it thanks guys hey guys one of the best if not the best resource I can refer you to for starting a freelance business is at studywebdevelopment.com slash freelancing the creator Kyle shared it with me and I can personally vouch that this bundle is well worth it you get a 130 page guide to freelancing and it comes with things like invoice templates client proposals HTML and CSS templates a portfolio website access to a private Facebook community and much more so use the code Brad 25 to get 25% off today